Welcome to Topper Talk, your number one Western Kentucky athletics podcast. I'm your host, Stephen Moffitt, and I'm joined by co-host Tyler Bailey. Hilltopper Nation, whether it's happening on the hill or on the road, grab those red towels, stand up and cheer, because it's up next on Topper Talk. Welcome back, and thank you for downloading and listening to another episode of the Topper Talk podcast. As always, you can follow us on Twitter and Instagram at Topper underscore Talk. You can also find our YouTube channel at Topper Talk Podcast. We've also just now joined the world of TikTok at Topper.talk. So slide on over there, check out those short videos, you know, a little short form content that we're just dabbling in. Also, you know, IG Reels, uh, Facebook videos, YouTube shorts, etc. We're just going to be just trying to spread the audience a little bit, the content, just get it out there. Make sure you share those episodes, uh, tell a friend, you know, rate, subscribe, review. You know, we always appreciate and love any kind of feedback that you get uh, as always i've got tyler here with me tyler you ready to dive into a, a nice big long episode yeah boy hey it's gonna be a good episode talking about football let's get into it before we do let's talk about our sponsor of the podcast and that is the fireman moving company uh, they are the official moving company of wku athletics not only can they be trusted to move all the coaches in and out of western but they can move you anywhere nationwide the fireman moving company is owned and operated by Fireman and is founded by WKU alumni. If you're looking to move sometime soon, give them a call at 270-791-1755 and get yourself a free quote. It will be the best thing that you do if you have to move or you have any moving needs, big or small, near or far, as I say every time. Give them a call. Just find out what it's going to cost and how much time they can save you. I promise it will be worth it. Now, before we jump into the main segment of the episode let's get caught up with our red towel wrap up which catches us up with all the athletics that we've missed since our last recording so tyler here's with that wrap up all right so on one six women's basketball got a dub versus liberty 68 to 66 on the exact same day we're going to be talking about this shortly men's basketball got that dub against liberty in a contest that settled a score 70 to 68 uh, Paige Briggs was named a second team academic All American, uh, only second Hilltopper ever and first since the 2000 season. Uh, and that was Natalie Furry. Uh, softball winter camp January 13th uh, is happening January 13th from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. hitting and defensive clinics. Uh, former WKU defensive back Kendrick Simpkins committed to Baylor and former linebacker Aaron Key committed to UConn. And WKU basketball has moved up to the number 17 in the College Basketball Insiders mid-major poll. So that's it for the Red Tower wrap-up. I'm off back to you. Yeah, as always, you know, awesome stuff in there. You know, awesome for Paige Briggs. You know, just getting more accolades. You know, her career at Western has been just studded with trophies and titles and rings and just all of these different accolades. And you know, now she's playing in that professional volleyball league and she's still getting some accolades. So congratulations to her. You know, obviously the softball winter camp coming up. Uh, baseball obviously will be kicking up as well pretty soon. Um, you know, a couple of players that have transferred out, you know, in the portal and, and committed to other schools, so which means they're not going to be coming back. You know, they're, we were holding out hope that some of those guys might come back, but we do wish, you know, Kendrick and Aaron well at their new schools. Um, and then obviously WKU basketball moving up in that, mid-major poll um, in large part because of this victory that we're going to talk about today. Um, so let's jump right in. Uh, WKU hosted Liberty this past Saturday at EA Dental Arena in front of 5,057 eager and rowdy friends. Thanks in large part to our friends at the Red Tile Trust and their 500 ticket giveaway. We all got to see a Conference USA thriller as WKU was able to pull out that victory 70 to 68. WKU is now 12 and 3 on the season and 1 and 0 in Conference USA play, while Liberty fell to 11 and 5 on the season and 0 and 1 in Conference USA play. Um, I also had the pleasure of getting to hang out with our good buddy, Jeremiah Flincham, uh, Liberty fr uh, friend and fanatic, you know, lives down in Nashville. Came up for the game. We got to hang out and kick it um, at Hilligan's a little bit before the game, then attended the game. You know, had really nice seats, got to hang out there and enjoy, a, you know, just a good back and forth ball game, uh, all in good fun. There was a little ribbing, a little a little smack talking, but it was all in good fun. And then after the game, um, you know, went and hung out with some of the staff and players 
and went and got a little bit of food to eat, fill our bellies you know, before we send him back home with that L. But Jeremiah, we love you. You know, we'll see you soon again, I'm sure. Um, Don McHenry was our leading scorer in this game. He finished with 18 points. Dante Allen chipped in with 13, and then Brandon Newman and Rodney Howard each had 11 points. On the other side, Liberty's leading scorer, Kyle Rode, was held to only 15 points on four of 19 shooting, including four of 14 from three. And Zach Cleveland was the leading scorer for Liberty. He had a career high 23 points. Now, Tyler, how did you know what are your thoughts on this game and how it played out? Well, I think the game played out like everyone thought it would be. You know, we you had the number one number, we had the team that was picked to win Conference USA, and then you had uh, uh, us coming in, meeting head to head. You know, a lot of people thought it was going to be close, going to be a tight game. It was. Uh, I thought it – I mean, I, I I was nervous. I was nervous whenever I was listening to it at work. I was pacing the floors, you know, going around in circles, one, you know, questioning why. Why would they do that? Why would they shoot that shot? Um, but, no, I, I, I thought it was a good game, and I'm looking forward to the rematch at the end of the season. Yeah, the first half of this game was a very even and back-and-forth battle. I mean, both teams – um, that especially the first 10 minutes of the first half, you know, I remember, you know, at one point looking up being like, man, you know, this game is sloppy. You know, me and Jeremiah just sitting there talking and we look up and I think the score was something like 16 to 17. So it was sloppy. It was not well executed, just good defense on both ends. Um, but the teams were still scoring, you know, it still wasn't, you know, a insanely low, uh, scoring first half. Uh, both teams ended up shooting around 40% in the first half. We went into halftime with a 34 to 33 lead. And then after halftime, the WKU defense really tightened up and was able to create some space to pull ahead of the Flames. Uh, we held Liberty to 10 out of 35 shooting in the second half, which is only 28.57%. And there were only three out of 18 from three in the second half, which is 16.67%. Now, there was a three-pointer made by Dante Allen that gave us a 13-point lead with 442 left to play. And it really, you know, in the arena, you know, the fans had gotten into it. There was energy. And it really felt like we were just going to cruise, you know, to, you know, a 15 to 20 point victory at that point. Um, but then that's when, you know, Liberty and that motion offense that they run, they run a lot of screens, a lot of back cuts, a lot of movement, just trying to create some defensive chaos, get you out of position. You know, they really started executing a lot better. They were able to get some easy baskets. Um, they forced some uh, untimely turnovers by us. Um, and I will say there were possibly a couple of questionable foul calls down the, you know, down the stretch there that allowed them to claw back into the game. And ultimately, you know, they had a chance, you know, inbound in the ball to have a last second shot to tie or win the game. Uh, but they weren't able to convert and WKU obviously held on and got the victory. Now, Don McHenry, Led our team, like I said earlier, he had 18 points. He also had three rebounds and three assists. Dante Allen finished with 13 points on two of three shooting from three. He also had four rebounds. Rodney Howard had probably his best game as a Hilltopper so far, 11 points and nine rebounds. Brandon Newman came in. He had 11 points on three out of six shooting from three. He also had seven rebounds. And then Tyrone Marshall with eight points and five rebounds. Tyler, what what about our performers there? Just some of those guys really stepping up and playing. You know, what do you think about how these guys played and were able to lead us to victory? Well, it was really good to see Rodney come in and uh, you know make an impact on the game. Uh, I've been looking forward to him doing having a game like this. You know, being six eleven, uh, going up there and almost having a double double, getting them nine rebounds and what well, 11, 11 points. Uh, I mean, that that's impressive to me. I'm glad to finally see him come out of his shell a little bit. Uh, Brandon Newman, I mean, it was good to see him drain them threes. Uh, you know, he went down there and added seven rebounds to the mix. You know, he, he's just going – he's kind of like a utility player. He, he can he can do a little bit of what he can as a guard, and then he goes down and gets the rebounds with, with the big boys in the paint. So, I was kind of glad to see, uh, see Brandon and Rodney come out and play the games they did. Yeah, now we're going to talk about the key indicators, um, just like we did in all our football recaps. Just talk about, you know, those key points that we're going to look at every game that are going to usually kind of determine, you know, whether we won or lost a game. Um, first of all, we won the rebounding battle 40 to 39. 
Uh, WKU shot 46.3% for the game, 38.9% from three, while Liberty only shot 34.3% from the field and 22.9% from three. Uh, speaking of those three pointers, WQ, WKU was seven out of 18, and Liberty was eight out of 35. You know, so they took you know double the amount of threes we we did, and they only made one more than we did. To me, that was kind of the biggest reason for why we pulled this game out was just really being able to hold them uh, just well below their season average there. Then our bench point scoring, uh, WKU we had 29 points, and Liberty only had 12. And then looking at the assist to turnover ratio. WKU had 12 assists and 21 turnovers, which was not, you know, just not ideal. Um, you know, something we obviously have to clean up going forward. It really kind of allowed them to remain in this game, even, you know, as well as we shot, you know, so much better than them. Uh, then Liberty finished with 16 assists and 15 turnovers. So that, you know, quite a bit of turnovers themselves, but they shared the ball and just had a little bit, uh, definitely had a better assist to turnover ratio. Now let's dive into some grades. Again, similar to how we did uh, during football season recaps. First of all, Tyler, let's talk about that offensive grade. What do you have for the WKU basketball offense versus Liberty? All right, so like you said, win the halftime up one, uh, and then we got up to a double-digit lead in the second half. Uh, but we did go on a scoring drought there for the last, like, three minutes and 39 seconds, which, you know, allowed Liberty to claw itself back into the game there at the end. So. Uh, I'm gonna give them a B for that. It would have been it, it would have been a lot better, but that scoring drought just just kind of it, it put a bad taste in my mouth. Yeah, the end of the game game execution, you know, which we've seen a few times now this year. Um, you know, most recently against Austin P. You know, we were up pretty you know double digits late in the game on them, um, and they were able to claw back and get to you know a last shot attempt to possibly win that game. Uh, We kind of had that same feeling here again at Diddle where, you know, Liberty, you know, had every chance to pull off that win, you know, after being down the majority of the second half, they could have won that game. So I'm right there with you. I'm going to give the offense a B. What about the defensive grade? All right. So we held Liberty to 22.9% three-point shooting and 34.3 field goal shooting and forced them to commit over their average of turnovers. Um, Interesting enough, in the first half, I think Hal Smith said that they had like 13 uh, buckets and they had an assist on 12 of them. It was like whatever number of buckets they had, they had just one less of the assist, which to me was was crazy, but that's the type of offense they run. But, uh, yeah, so we forced we, – we did force them to turn the ball over a lot. So I'm going to give defense uh, a minus on that. Yeah, I'm right there with them. I'm going to give defense an A. I mean, you know, the first half of the game was a little sloppier than we would have liked. You know, the second half of the game and, the, you know, the shooting percentages that we saw um, where they shot, you know, 25%, I think it was in the second half, and only three out of 18 from three in the second half. Um, you know, some of that, uh, you know, if you're watching the game or you go back and rewatch it, you know, you might just say, man, they're just missing wide open shots. But – a lot of the reason why they're missing wide open shots is because we're so WKU plays with a, such a fast offensive pace. You know, we're up and down the floor. We're rotating a lot of guys in. We play a deep bench. So you're going to get tired if you're not rotating players in. And once you start getting tired, those legs get tired, you start missing shots. Um, and I think that's exactly what we saw. You know, we were very strong for on defense most of the game, but when we weren't luckily enough, you know, they were missing shots. And I think some of that had to do with conditioning and just the depth of the team that we have continued to play. And, you know, obviously we hope we continue to do going forward. What about the coaching grade versus Liberty? So the coaches, uh, Coach Lutz and, and the, the staff had a great game plan. And I feel like they made the adjustments they need to on defense after halftime uh, to get the team to play better defense. So I'm going to give them an A. Yeah, I'm going to give him an A as well. You know, they put um, Tyrone Marshall on Kyle Road. You know, he was kind of their, you know, their leading score for the season. You know, he was kind of their go-to guy. He wasn't their leading score in this game, uh, mainly due to the fact that he was just missing shots. You know, he had a hard time. You know, any bucket that he got wasn't an easy bucket. So, you know, the coaches did a good job. Um, you know, they're facing a smaller, quicker team. So, you know, we saw some lineup adjustments to reflect that to where, 
you know, Brandon Newman, Dante Allen might have been the biggest guys on the floor at times um, because of the lineup that they were playing and forcing us to play. So the coaches, Steve Lutz, Plana, you know, Cross and McAllister, Guster, you know, all those guys um, had a really good game plan and just tried to stay one step ahead. And I think we did a really good job of, of preparing for Liberty and winning this ball game. So I'm going to give the coaches an A. What about your grade for the fans versus Liberty? All right, so I want to start this out by giving a shout out to the kid. During, like you saw the picture of the flex cam, the, the 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 boy with the shirt from like 2004, like little red rascals or whatever. Shout out to him. You're a legend. Keep it up, kid. Uh, also, having over 5,000 rowdy Western fans and stands help out a whole lot. Uh, I do wish it was a sellout, but you know, 5,056. Uh, I was listening to on the radio, and I could definitely hear the fans coming in uh, in, in the background of the broadcast. So I'm going to give them an A as well. You know, I'll say this. As a fan that's been going to Western Kentucky games for 20-plus years now, I think 2001, I think, was the first year I came to games. I was a student in 2002, but I came before I was a student. I came to games. That felt and looked like more than 5,000 people. And definitely a big shout out to Red Tail Trust doing that 500 ticket giveaway for that home game. Um, just there, hopefully we can do that again in the future, maybe in the near future, wink, wink. Um, but definitely, it definitely contributed to the atmosphere. Um, you know, I was surprised when it was announced well below 7,000. I thought we were going to be pushing that 7,000 number, even with the students out. So I thought the fans showed up. They were into the game. They were loud, rowdy, vocal, cheering. Um, it was a great atmosphere, a good way to open Conference USA, a good way to support this team that's now 12-3 and three on the season, eight-game winning streak. Um, we got a couple big games coming up. You know, they're all going to be big games in Conference USA. Um, it is a one big league, you know, or likely is going to be. Um, unless something crazy happens. So, we, you know, we need to win all the games. And we talked about that in the season prediction. You know, we definitely need to win all the home games. So the fans showing up, showing out, being loud, and, and bringing back that dental magic um, was really impressive to me, and I hope it continues going forward. So I'm going to give the fans an A. So that uh, concludes the recap of Liberty. Now we're going to look forward and to the Wednesday night matchup that we have versus Sam Houston State. And then the Saturday matchup, versus Jacksonville State right after this break. All right, and WKU travels to Huntsville, Texas, to take on Sam Houston State on Wednesday, January 10th at 6.30 p.m. on ESPN+. WKU comes into the game at 12-3 overall and 1-0 in Conference USA, while Sam Houston is 8-8 overall and 1-0 in Conference USA play. The ESPN Power Index really likes Sam Houston State to win this game with a 61.3% chance to win. And currently, Vegas has Sam Houston as a 1.5 point favorite. Now, Sam Houston opened their Conference USA play with an impressive 81 to 77 victory over you know, one of the conference favorites. You know, us, Liberty, and Louisiana Tech are kind of the, the top three tier in the preseason. Um, they were able to beat them 81 to 77 uh to open conference usa play so you know tyler kick it to you real quick you know how does this game feel to you with the streaking red hot wku basketball team you know going to sam houston how does it feel i honestly i i, I kind of take that personally uh you know the espn power index and the and vegas the bet nods I, t to me that just don't seem right i mean i feel like right now we're playing good team basketball we're playing good defense i mean if, if you look at the no noticeable notable games that sam houston's loss had an 85 70 loss at oklahoma state 70 to 67 loss at ole miss uh 88 to 86 win at troy uh if troy's you know it's whatever uh 78 61 loss at arizona state it's 96 60 loss at Texas Tech. Now, granted, this is all at, at games and uh, had a 63 62 win uh, hosting UL Monroe. So, I mean, maybe they do have that big of a home court advantage. Uh, I wouldn't imagine. And their average steal to turnover ratio 7.4 uh, versus 13.3. 
So, I mean, honestly, I feel like we should be able to go in there and handle our business fairly easy. Um, I mean, I'm not expecting a tight game, but I can watch it be a nail biter. Uh, I'm hoping it ain't, but no, I, I, I just feel like we should be able to go in there and, and get a good win in this game. Yeah, I kind of agree with you. First, let's talk about some of their uh, notable players, just people we need to be aware of. The first person is their leading scorer. That's Devon Brown. He's a six foot five junior guard who averages 14.3 points per game. Uh, their leading rebounder is Keon Scroggins. He's a six foot seven junior forward who averages 5.7 rebounds per game. And then their leading passer is Jaden Ray. He's a five foot 10 senior point guard that's averaging 4.1 assists per game. Now, what you talked about earlier, some of those games they played in non conference. Um, you know, this Sam Houston team is definitely battle tested. You know, they played a very tough non-conference schedule. Um, they played four P5 opponents that, that you mentioned. Um, they also played a very good Grand Canyon team that's having a really good season this year. Um, they did lose all those games, but I think we all know that, you know, when you play a little bit tougher, tougher competition out of conference and that non-con, you know, before you get to CUSA play, it kind of helps you know, uh, you know, iron sharpens iron. It kind of makes you just a little bit tougher, a little bit more battle tested, a little bit ready um, for when that, you know, that change of of uh, competition changes there from that, you know, those P5 guys and you come back down to, you know, this level, it's a little bit different. And, you know, you've had a little bit harder road playing those P5s, even in losses, you know, they should have been learning something and taken away from that um, and getting ready and better uh, for Conference USA play. And I think that showed with their, you know, that opening upset win over Louisiana Tech. So now let's jump into some keys to victory for this game. Tyler, what does WKU need to do to beat Sam Houston State? Muted. Sorry. Uh, before I get into that, I'm going to mention uh, their leading blocker for Sam Houston State, who I think he has the – best name uh solely main uh solely main uh do i'm sorry dude uh dombia uh, i think that's how you pronounce it he leads he's a leading blocker with one per game also gives out 6.4 points per game 5.4 rebounds per game and 49.3 field goal percentage is 61.5 free throw percentage so um it probably wouldn't be a bad one to to foul if you're going to send someone to, to the free throw line. But uh, keys to victory. I'm going to say be aggressive in the paint. Uh, you know, I know I'm going – I'm just going to say be aggressive in the paint, get the rebounds, and uh, get easy buckets in the paint. Yeah, my first key to victory is going to be take care of the basketball. You know, we, we've seen that when we have more turnovers – um, then assist when we don't take care of the basketball, we're given, you know, we're giving the ball back to the uh, other team without scoring. You know, you have an empty possession um, that we're more likely to lose. You know, we had 21 turnovers versus Liberty and nearly lost that game. You know, we need to cut that number, you know, nearly in half. You know, you can live in that 11 to 15, 16 range and, and survive, you know, as long as you're shooting well. Um, but, you know, you start having an off night shooting and or just not even getting shots up, turning the ball over and you have a hard time winning the game. So we've definitely got to get our turnovers down. Um, Sam Houston is a tough defensive minded team. They put a lot of pressure on the ball, similar to the way we play defense. You know, we're, you know, almost full court defense all the way up, throw a lot of bodies at you. Um, they'll throw some zone at you. You know, they're going to give you different looks, switch it up. So, you know, we've got to take care of the ball. Tyler, what's your second key to victory? Uh, kind of piggyback off yours is, is going, it's going to be got to win the turnover battle. Um, you know, we didn't win it versus Liberty. Um, and I, that game was really close. So we definitely got to win that battle if we want to come out victorious. Yeah, we, we like we flopped our one and twos here because my second one is going to be be aggressive points in the paint. You know, we've seen Rodney Howard, you know, now had his best game versus Liberty. Uh, we know what Baba Carr can do down there. Um, and even our guards, you know, th those guys slashing and cutting and getting into the paint and getting those close looks, you know, we did make a good amount of threes. You know, we made what seven threes this last game, but I think we've 
have kind of deduced that we're not a great shooting team. So anytime we can get near the bucket, get in the paint and score, you know, I think uh, that's going to increase our odds for winning. Tyler, what about your third key to victory versus Sam Houston? The third one is going to be don't fall in love with the three point shot. Um, you know, I, I've, I've heard this one hounded multiple times throughout the years. And, you know, you, I feel like, I feel like we're going to have to build the game from the inside out. You know, you, you got to get the points down low before you can really get out and bust open a three uh, or, or start draining a lot of threes or at least getting open looks out there. So I'm going to, I'm going to go with don't fall in love with the three-point shot. Yeah, my third key to victory is going to be make your free throws. Man, coming down the wire, and this isn't just a one game happening, but coming down the wire versus Liberty there, we left a lot of points on the off the board. You know, this when we go to the free throw line, we get fouled, we're being aggressive, whatever it is, you know, especially if it's the one and one, you know, before you're in double bonus, you know, you've got to hit that front end of the bonus. You know, you can't miss it and not even give yourself a chance to get two free throws. So um, you know, I think that is an area that we're lacking in right now is our free throw percentage overall as a team. Um, you know, I just would like to see that a little better. And I know it's not the, you know, it's still early in the season per se, you know, conference play is just starting that can get better. Um, but I think that's one of those things that eventually it's going to cost us a game if we miss too many free throws. Um, so we just got to be a little better there. And what about your MVT? Who's going to be your most valuable topper to beat Sam Houston state? Well, I'm going. I'm going to keep this pattern going. I'm going with the, with the post players. Uh, I've talked about them a lot, and I'm going with Rodney Hired to get in there and uh, dominate the paint and pretty much play cleanup, man. You know, if there's a loose, if there's a ball comes off of the cylinder, uh, I, I, he needs to get up there and get it and get an easy put back on an offensive rebound or get out and pass out to the uh, to the guards going up the floor. Out of passes. I'm going to go with uh, our point guard, Don McHenry. I think he's been super impressive this season. He's been the head of the snake. Um, he's very fast on offense, good dribbles, can get to the lane and get his shot nearly any time he wants. Um, has started to step back and you know hit some threes every now and again. Been nice to see. Um, but I think he's going to kind of be – you know, the uh, straw that stirs the drink in a lot of different ways, um, especially with the defensive pressure that they apply. If he can break that pressure, um, you know, he may have a clear path to the goal. You know, if they're playing a little bit too aggressively, uh, I would love to see that. And I think Don, you know, being our leading scorer, being our point guard, um, has asserted himself as our go-to player. And I think he just, you know, needs to continue to do that and carry us to victory. What about a score prediction versus Sam Houston? Who you got? All right, so they averaged 72.4 points per game. Uh, I think our defense is going to hold them below that. I think we're going to score 78. They're going to score 66. So it's a victory for the top, 78-66. Really close to my score. I went with 79 to 70. Give me the top's victory. Uh, going on the road, it's tough. You know, winning on the road in conference, anywhere is tough. Um, but you know, going down there would be a new environment for us, new member to the to the conference. So let's go down there and get a big victory. Um, now let's talk about our upcoming game this Saturday against Jacksonville State. Um, we host them this Saturday at 1:13 at 4 p.m. on the CBS Sports Network. Um, obviously, there's still a game to play. You know, both teams have midweek games, but we're currently 12-3 and and 1-0 and in Conference USA play. Jacksonville State is 9-7 and overall and 1-0 and in Conference USA play. Now, the ESPN Power Index likes WKU to win this game with a 59.4% chance. And Jay, Jacksonville State opened up their Conference USA play with a 70-63 victory over Florida International. So, Tyler, you know, we got the fighting Ray Harpers coming into Dental Arena. You know, how does this game look to you on paper? Well, I mean, they, I think Jacksonville State could be a good opponent. Uh, but if you, if you look at their stats and you look at what their team's are doing, it really only relies on one guy. And, then, you know, you, you shut him down, you're taking out a lot of their scoring, a lot of – but he only plays 28.8 minutes a game, though. Ray, he is spreading these minutes uh, – 
good among these players. I mean, you got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven guys playing double digit minutes. Uh, so you know th those players ain't getting tired. Um, so he's always keeping fresh legs in there. But I think that you know Western, going, I think Western, we're going to get a good crowd at home. I think it's going to be a good game, and I think Western's going to come out on top of this one. But I mean. We're going to talk about it, but I, I, I still think it's going to be another victory for the tops. Yeah, let's talk about some of those players that we need to be aware of. And you alluded to one of them, and that is their leading scorer, uh, Kiki Tandy. He's a six foot two senior guard from Hopkinsville, Kentucky. That name should sound familiar. We recruited him pretty heavily out of high school. Um, ultimately, he committed to Xavier, spent several years there, and is now. Um, on his yet last year of eligibility, you know, has joined the Jacksonville State team. Uh, he's currently averaging 19.4 points per game. He had 35 points in their last outing uh, versus FIU to win that Conference USA opener. So pretty lethal score that they've got there. And, you know, one thing I noticed when I was looking at their stats, he has double the amount of shot attempts of their next uh, player. So, you know, he's a volume player, volume score, volume shooter, like you said, shut him down, cut the head of the snake off. Uh, really going to improve our odds to win. You'll hold him to a below par, below average game. Uh, it's going to make our life a whole lot easier. I'm sure that's easier said than done. Um, but the coaches will game plan for that. I'm sure that'll be high on their agenda. Uh, their leading rebounder is Jawan Purdue. He's a six foot six senior forward. He's averaging 6.1 point or rebounds per game. And then their leading passer is Quincy Clark. He is a six foot four guard, averaging three assists per game. Now, currently, Jacksonville State is scoring 72.4 points per game and only allowing 62.4. Uh, they're shooting 46.5% from the field and 33.8% from three. WKU comes into this game averaging 79.7 .7 points per game and only allowing 73.3 points per game. So, Tyler, let's get into some keys to victory for Jacksonville State. What is your first key to victory? Hide the Diet Coke. Make sure Ray Harper don't have nothing to drink. Hide it. Everyone, do your part. Go out, buy Walmart, Kroger's, Dollar General, gas stations out of the Diet Coke so he cannot get any refreshment while he's here. Uh, but now, uh, I'm going to say contain Tandy the best you can. Uh, I mean, the boy's putting up 19.4 points per game. The second, Qu Quincy Clark. Uh, is their second leading uh, score, and he's got 8.7 points per game, and he plays 24.6 minutes. Um, so, I mean, really, you contain Tandy, there goes their offense pretty much. And I'm hoping he just don't get out and have a all-star day like UAB's little player did there for, like last year. I still don't like him. Yeah, Taven Lovin. Yeah, I know who you're talking about. Um we need, you know, like you said, we need to contain Tandy. Um, you know, he he is their their offense. You know, he's going to be the guy that, you know, we're going to need Tyrone Marshall or Brandon Newman um, or Christian Lander. You know, whichever defender we have in and on him in the game is going to have to be just on high alert. You know, you, you've got to be shadowing him at all times, whether he's on ball or off ball. You've got to be right there with him in his hip pocket, not letting him get free. Um, he's a good shooter. He's a good driver, you know, mid range, you know, he, he can hit all three levels. Um, so we definitely just have to be hypersensitive to him. Not, I wouldn't go as far as to say double teaming him, you know, to get the ball out of his hands. Cause I don't want to necessarily give one of those guys, the oppor another guy, the opportunity to beat us. I just want to limit the guy that's used to beating other teams. And he's been their leading score. I think their last six games, he's their guy. He wants the ball. He wants to put it up. So we definitely need to contain him. What's your second key to victory versus Jacksonville State? All right, so once again, it's going it's going to include Tandy, but uh, also Juwan Purdue is to, like get out on their shooters. Granted, Tandy has shot the most three point shots. Uh, he's hit fifty one out of one twenty four. Juwan Purdue has hit twelve out of thirty five, and that is their like that's their second best three point shooter. Shot the most is is their forward so. To get out, get out on there and uh, run them off the run them off the three point line. 
I think we need to win the rebounding battle, and I think this is on both sides of the court, offensively and defensively. Um, you know, to only win it against Liberty by one rebound, forty to thirty-nine, going against a team that was noticeably undersized, noticeably smaller than us, um, and to still let them just hang there with us. You know, that's giving them extra opportunities to score. You know, they're they're rebounding miss free throws. You know, we're we're giving up those kind of loose balls and rebounds that, you know, we should be securing, getting the ball going the other way. Um, a lot of times that rebounding battle will tell you the tail of the te- tape of of who's going to win the game. And it's really, it's an energy stat. You know, it's an effort stat. That's all it is. And we need our guys, you know, we need Brandon, Rodney, Babacar, everybody crashing the board, getting the ball, and pushing it back the other way. That's what we need to do. We have to win the rebounding battle. Tyler, what's your third key to victory? Apply pressure and force turnovers. Uh, you know, if you get the ball out of their hands, they can't score. Simple as that. Um, so yeah, I'd like to I'd like to shut down their offensive uh mojo and just cause them to turn the ball over like crazy. Yeah, I almost was gonna go with um limit our turnovers, but I think you know that's an easy way out. I think I want to go with kind of what you said, force turnovers. I think our defensive pressure. Um, especially towards Tandy. You know, we have to be super aggressive with him, but we also know that when we're aggressive with him, he may be looking to pass. Or if he doesn't have the ball, we know that they're going to be looking to pass the ball to him. So getting in those passing lanes, just making life hard to deny him the ball, you know, let it be late in the shot clock, whatever that is. He's not bringing the ball up the court typically. He's not their point. Um, So just being harassing to him, causing turnovers on defense and letting that lead to offense. I think that will make our life a whole lot easier. Tyler, who's your MVT, your most valuable topper versus Jacksonville State? Well, you said him last on the last uh, team. I'm going to say Don McHenry. Uh, Don McHenry. Uh, I feel like he's going to need to be there to make sure uh, – to basically be the floor general out there and to, uh, and to, you know, set the plays up, good ball movement, put the ball where it needs to be. You know, I don't want to take the cheap route out of this. I don't, but I'm kind of going to. My MVT is going to be whoever is guarding Tandy, Kiki Tandy. You know, I have a feeling it's going to be Tyrone Marshall most of the time um, and or Brandon Newman would be my guess. You know, they're longer, um, athletic, can defend perimeter or inside. I think those two guys would be, um, options one A and B to guard him. So I think those two guys and their ability to stay with Tandy and keep a hand in his face and just make his life hard, you know, make his 40 minutes of diddle or his 28 minutes of diddle, however much time he sees on the court, um, just make it as difficult as possible, you know, send him back to Jacksonville State um, without a Diet Coke and with the loss with this coach, oh, oh, Ray, our buddy Ray coming back to. Uh, did arena so i think you know whoever those two guys those one or two guys that are tasked with guarding their leading score i think it's going to be a tough task but i think those guys will um definitely be very instrumental to us winning this game what about a score prediction versus jacksonville state well, i'm going to say first of all before i say that what if ray harper and lutz gets into a yelling match like uh, Harper did against uh, Petrino back whenever Louisville came down here. Wouldn't that be intense? I mean, that that would just, gosh, that, that, that'd be pay for TV, you know, old pay-per-view. Uh, score prediction, I'm going to, let's see, they average 72.4. I'm doing this off the off the rip. Uh, I'm going to say 73.68. It's going to be kind of a close one. Top still come on top, though. Yeah, I'm going with a little bit bigger of a victory, and, and I probably should know better because I have seen how we close games. Like, you know, we might be up by this amount with three minutes to go, and then it might end up closer to where your your guess is. But I'm going to ride with it. I'm going to roll the dice, throw it out there, put it out into the world, see what happens. I'm going with a final score. The tops win 82 to 72. A pretty comfortable win. A 2-0 and start in conference play, 13-3. and overall play um heading into the next week of game so give me that i think we've got a big batch of games coming up you know big win over liberty uh great crowd uh big game coming up on the road versus Sam Houston state and then this big one back at home versus jacksonville state again a new opponent 
but a familiar face uh, in Ray Harper and especially uh, Kiki Tandy there, uh, in-state kid that, you know, it's gonna, it'll be nice to see him in Diddle, but we need to send those two back out and back home with a, a nice fresh loss in their pocket. So, Tyler, man, good good uh, recap of Liberty, good preview of some teams coming up and, you know, coming to Diddle and that we get to play. So give us your final words and take us the heck out of here. Well, I'm currently overcoming COVID, so I've been quarantined up here uh, since yesterday uh, in, in my little office. we got a day bed over here, so it's been fun. Uh, I'm ready to watch the game tomorrow or listen to it, uh, probably listen to Randy Lee and Hale on, on the radio on the phone. But, uh, man, that, that game, that, that Liberty game, I wish I could have been there. Gosh, that would have been a fun game to be at with all the crowd yelling everything. everything. Uh Everybody come out Saturday to welcome old Ray Harper back in. And, you know, let's show him what Hilltopper Nation can be. Let's, let's, let's remind him what Hilltopper Nation can be and how loud and obnoxious that that place can get. Um, so with that, I mean, it's been a great episode. Uh, and we, we got something special coming on for y'all. That's going to be awesome. Y'all just stay patient and, and wait for that one. But uh, we'll say, Moff, who has it better than us? Nobody, buddy. You always know it. Nobody. Go Go Tops. Tops. Later, guys. See you.